Welcome to Wiki Africa Hour, where Africa's Wikimedians talk to, learn from, and discuss with each other topics they choose. Each session is curated by African Wikimedians to expand Africa's open movement. Today's host is Ceslas Obanyaya. Dear friends of free knowledge, I'm very happy to welcome you all to episode 17 of Wiki Africa Hour titled Wiki Loves Africa 2022 winners. I'm Ceslas Obunaya, your host. The Wiki Loves Africa International Photography Contest started in 2014 and has successfully completed its eighth edition this year under the theme Home and Habitat. The contest, which runs on a different theme every year, has richly contributed African-related content to the Wikimedia projects like Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, Wikidata, only to mention but a few. Since the first Wiki Loves Africa edition in 2014, its 8,640 images have been collected, thanks to 10,380 unique participants. And by June 2022, the entire Wiki Loves Africa images have been viewed over a billion times altogether. This is hard to picture. Okay, and what does it say about a monthly basis view? Overall, the Wiki Loves Africa submitted images are viewed at least 25 million times each month. This statistic uh, was from, of course, June 2022. And lastly, more than 337 events in about 26 African countries have been organized over the last eight years. Of course, the event figures, uh, they don't include your housewarming parties as we were not invited. This year's Wiki Loves Africa theme was Home and Habitat. It received over 16,000 entries from 1,111 participants. A five-tiered selection process was carried out in order to select the winners for the following prize categories. This selection included a first review by 35 communists and members of the Wiki Loves Africa community. This was followed by four vigorous stages of selection by our team of 12 international jurors made up of professional photographers and experienced Wikimedians. The prizes include first prize for $2,000, second prize for $1,500, third prize for $1,000, and the prize for best uh, video, of course, with some great quality for $1,000, and a special collection prize for $750. In case you were wondering, a special collection is a series of images that tell a story. In addition to the international prizes, some communities Decided to have their own national jury process and prizes as well. For this episode, we have invited the winners of the various uh, Wiki Loves Africa 2022 international prize categories in order for us to learn the journeys uh, of these individuals as regards um, their creative uh, activities in, in Africa. Up to this moment, where of course they have won the international prize of the Wiki Loves Africa 2022. We also have invited uh, two members of the Wiki Loves Africa 2022 International Jury to enable us to understand the jury process and how the winners were selected. But unfortunately, one of the members of the jury was involved in an accident an hour ago and wouldn't be able to join us. Please, you can put him in your prayers. His name is Anas Adam. But then before we move to engage the guests, uh, let's have a look at the top 20 images from the Wiki Loves Africa 2022 International Contest. Thank you. 
And now we move forward to engaging the Wikilabs Africa International Prize winners. First, we have um, Soma Kamal. Soma Kamal is from Egypt. And uh, it might interest you to know that she was a teacher, but she is currently retired. And uh, she has been in the Wikimedia space since 2018. She participated in Wikilabs Africa. 2019 and won the Wikilabs Africa 2019 International Second Prize and the Wikilabs Africa 2020 International Third Prize. And this time, Soma is the winner of the Wikilabs Africa 2022 International First Prize. And secondly, we have um, Mohamed Hosin, who is also an Egyptian and a professional photographer. He graduated from the Faculty of Arts tour guide department at Ain Shams University. He began working as a photographer in 2016 with a focus on documenting daily life and social issues in Egypt. He won the Wikilabs Africa 2019 International Third Prize. And in 2020, he received a diploma in photojournalism from the Danish School of Media and Journalism. He is currently the winner for the Wiki Loves Africa 2022 International Second Prize. And then we have um, Ayarinde Ubundele, who is from Nigeria, and he is a professional photographer based in Nigeria. He is currently studying civil and environmental engineering at the University of Lagos, Nigeria. He's into portraits, landscape, wildlife, and nature photography and he won the Wikilabs Africa 2022 International Third Prize. Next, uh, we have Green Wilfred Somoni, who is a filmmaker from Boni Island of River State, Nigeria. He has worked on several films and uh, documentary, of course, event and commercial um, projects. He won the Wikilabs Africa 2022 International Best Video Prize. And lastly, we have uh, Mohamed Yusri, who is a, photo, um, a photographer from Egypt. He first participated in Wikilabs Africa in 2020 under the theme Africa on the Move and ended up winning the Wikilabs Africa 2020 International First Prize. And currently, he has won the Wikilabs Africa 2020 International Special Collection Prize. Hello, champs and uh, winners, and whatever beautiful name you have merited by winning this. First, I would, um, of course, ask us to introduce ourselves briefly in a line or two, starting with your names. Uh, we can start with you, Soma. Uh, first, I would like to uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, meeting. Uh, my name is Samar Kamel uh, from Egypt. Uh, photography is uh, a passion and a hobby for me. I uh, was working as a teacher for many years, about 20 years. And uh, when I was uh, 50, I decided to quit the, uh, the job and uh, do uh, uh, I will complete uh, uh, practice, participate uh, the photography. Thank you, Soma. And over to you, Mohammed Huzin. Oh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Mohammed Huzin from uh, Cairo, Egypt. Um, I started photography since uh, 2016, but I used to uh, shoot before that, uh, like for traveling and uh, like uh, discovering uh, the other cities around me. And then um, I was interested about uh, documentary stories about people uh, which is living in our cities. And um, I started to go more inside, uh, know about documentary and storytelling by taking some uh, courses and some uh, uh, scholarships. And I started with Danish school, and then I started with uh, the Canon Develop, uh, Development uh, Program. 
and then I got a grant from um, the Arab documentary program established with AFAC and uh, Magnum Foundation and uh, Prince Klaus Fund. Mm -hmm. um, and then Foundry and uh, Workshop and then Seven Academy also scholarship with them. Yeah. Thank and you. I'm into three photography portrait. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Over to you, Ayarinde Gundele. Uh, <coughs> good evening, everybody. Um, first, I want to thank everybody for this opportunity. Um, my journey for photography started in, in 2014 when I was about to open up my secondary school. Um, I noticed that people were reaching out to me that I should take the picture myself and I should tear them out to post. So from there, I said, okay, maybe this could just be it, and maybe I should just carry on with it. So when I relocated, I relocated to um, the aspect of the city where there were more vegetation and animals. So I started to put them in my phone. So when they were coming out to the United States, then I got my first camera and I started shooting um, animals instead of human beings. As soon as I see they complaining that one of our house, the great kind of the camera, I don't shoot human beings. So along the line, I started to double the fire and I started to do you know, photography, all other pieces of photography, like <coughs> um, wildlife, um, I do events, and I went to the line and started to look into documentary photography and how uh, ambiguous it can be for me. And I'm currently a student at the University of um, Lagos. Yeah, I'm uh, studying civil engineering. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And perhaps uh, when it comes to your turn again, Ayo, you should speak up. But then if you have an earphone or headset you could use, that's um, also nice. Okay. And um, over to you, uh, Mohammed Yusri. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, first, congratulations to all winners. And many thanks to the management of uh, Wikilabs Africa Photography Competitions for the great effort and uh, good organization. Uh, I am Muhammad Ahmad Yusri. I am a computer engineer. Uh, photography is my favorite uh, hobby. Actually, it's my only hobby. Uh, I am Egyptian amateur photographer since 2010. Uh, I am a member in many local and international uh, photography organizations like uh, FIAB and uh, RBS. Uh, also, I am uh, classified uh, as a EFIAB from FIAB organization, uh, participated in about 55 uh, exceptions in many countries, Egypt, Jordan, Oman, uh, France, Germany, Tunisia, Lebanon. Uh, also, I have uh, I had many local and uh, international prizes in the field of uh, photography. Uh, I am, was very really lucky, and uh, I had a good history with uh, Wiki Loves Africa photography competitions. In 2020, I uh, won the first prize. Uh, in 2021, the last. Uh, the last year I was in the highly commended sections. Uh, in this year, I won the special collection uh, prize. Thank you very much, uh, Mohammed, for that um, exhaustive um, introduction of yourself. And it's good to know that your hobby is photography. Welcome back, Miriam. But then, if you won't mind, we can have your section of the episode later than uh, we had earlier planned so um it started with the first click uh, first shot first photo or video as the case may be i would love to know how you all got into photography starting with you soma how did you get into photography um several years ago i was getting uh, through bad condition that uh, affected me, so I decided to uh, do something new. Uh, 
then uh, <clears throat> I learned uh, photography. I joined to uh, uh, photography club, uh, which went with uh, with them uh, many trips inside Egypt and uh, outside. The first uh, clip, uh, the first trip uh, was in uh, Kenya. It was in uh, 2016. Uh, in the same year, I went to uh, India, uh, then uh, went to uh, Morocco, and uh, in 2019, I went to Vietnam. But the most uh, important or beautiful trip uh, uh, was uh, Kenya, which I uh, I want uh, uh, to visit it uh, again. Uh, uh, after one year, uh, when I uh, retired in 2019, I won the, the, the second uh, prize in uh, Wiki Loves Africa. And uh, in 2020, I, uh, I won the third uh, prize. And uh, now I, uh, I won the first uh, prize, uh, which I'm uh, very happy uh, with this prize. Uh, uh, thank you thank you very much and uh in case uh you're following please that's the amazing picture that uh won the first prize and it might interest you to know that it was taken by summer who is retired but not tired thank you for that summer and uh over to you uh Hosein. how did you get into photography um well uh i started like with the street photography first and traveling um so i was traveling around egypt and by the way that uh that's my colleague muhammad and his my older brother muhammad yusri he used to go together a lot of places so and he really gave me a lot of uh, uh, advices and information about to shoot and to do whatever i want so he really, I want to thank him that he encouraged me a lot of time that to work more harder about my photography. So yeah, I used to travel uh, around Egypt here and shoot in many places, especially in uh, my roots, which is in upper Egypt. Uh, I used to go there and shoot some pictures and make uh, stories. And, and then I just moved forward to go that, to like, not going for more street photography, but I love now that to make more portraits and more stories, uh, documentary stories about issues, about uh, anything which is uh, attract me to do really that uh, around me. So that's all. Thank you very much. And yes, I can relate when you mentioned uh, traveling to take photos. You know, once you get on the road, you could easily be inspired to raise your cameras up or your phone camera at least to take uh, amazing shots of the things you see on the road. And over to you, yeah. Ayurinde, could you briefly share with us how you started um, photography? You're muted, Ayo. Can everybody hear me now? Yes, we can, please go ahead. Well, for me, it was um, during my last days in secondary school. So a lot of my colleagues were taking photos for memories. And um, they discovered that previous photos that I've taken before looked good. So they asked me to like, um, take them out of post. I should be the one taking the camera and taking the photos. Sometimes they'll have to wait for me to come down and um, take them pictures. So after then, when I moved out from the area, I we were located to the outskirts where there were more vegetation and bushes. So I decided to use my phone because I was uh, worried that what if the commercials that are done by this um, telecommunications company about their cameras 
why is it not working? Why are people not taking photos like that? This was like in 2017. So I started to go test them to see they're really good. So and to my surprise, they were really good. I was in a Blackberry on Adam at that time. So along the line, I decided to open a Facebook page to open my video. And when I was getting a um, good um, reception from there, I said, okay, this is I need to buy a camera. So when I got my first camera, I started taking pictures of my colleague and um, other people around me. And I started um, assisting um, a family friend of mine who happens to be um, a photographer also. So I went with her for gigs and event photography. So, but I don't lie, I, I felt like something was missing. I wanted to explore photography beyond just taking photos at the event. So I started taking photos of animals and landscape of food and other things. So ever since then, I've been a wonderful friend for me. It's interesting to know that Ayarinde, you were one of those who benefited from, I mean, Blackberry. Blackberry <laughs> could really do a lot, yes, from back in the days. So nice yeah. to know that that's involved uh, your humble beginning in photography. Yeah. And yeah. over to you, Yusri, how did you find this hobby? Uh, first, uh, I try uh, 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 to shoot by camera from uh, one of my friends. Uh, I like uh, this very much. Uh, start to take uh, courses to know the rules of photography and how to edit uh, the photos after uh, I shot. Uh, then start many trips around Egypt uh, in about uh, 12 years. Then, uh, many of uh, workshops uh, uh, I try uh, all types of all all can say and uh, photography themes, uh, street photography, portrait, landscape, uh, uh, slow shutters. But uh, the street photography, at least uh, at last, is uh, my uh, my favorite. That's all. Thank you very much. It's good to know you had tried several things at once to, you know, engineer your interests properly around this. And uh, coming back to you, Summer, from a retired teacher to winning uh, Wiki Loves Africa 2019 International Second Prize, Wiki Loves Africa 2020 International Third Prize, and now winning Wiki Loves Africa 2022 International First Prize. Soma, what were you teaching when you were still a teacher? And how and why did you get into photography? Aren't your family members reminding you that maybe you're probably too old to be a photographer now? Soma, I think you're muted. Uh, I was teaching, uh, uh, I was working as a computer teacher uh, 20 years, but uh, I don't like uh, teaching. So I decided to quit uh, my job and complete uh, my hobbies. Uh, my family uh, members always uh, encourage me and I always consult them uh, in choosing my pictures, especially my mother. Uh, I, start, uh, I start photography uh, very late. Uh, I was in 47 years or 46 uh, when I start uh, photography. Uh, what is, uh, I don't remember the question. That's actually fine, it's well answered. And uh, we are actually very happy to know that in instead of limiting you, that your family members are supporting you 
and that you even go as far as uh, sharing your work with them. And of course, there's no such thing like starting late. Uh, I, I, I told uh, I was start uh, I was start uh, late, but uh, as you get uh, get older, you must uh, find something new, uh, something you love to do, uh, or hobbies to participate, so that you can uh, complete uh, your life. Hmm. Uh, so I enjoy I enjoy uh, photography. Thank you very much, Sama. And it's good to know that uh, you found this your love or hobby to enable you enjoy your life. Thank you. And over to you, Hosein. You won the Wiki Loves Africa 2019 Tension Thought Prize. And on your second missionary journey, if I must say, to Wiki Loves Africa. You have won the Wiki Loves Africa 2022 International Second Prize. Why do you keep coming back to participate? And how do you manage your lens lifestyle with your other life? Uh, for uh, for, um, for Wiki Loves Africa, I feel that like it represents uh, Africa. And represent that the people that of Africa and photographers also in Africa at all, um, which is like speak about us, um, and we show that how Africa look like, how lifestyle, how people, uh, how everything over there look like, and the theme also seems very interesting. Sometimes it's very very hard seems to um, to go for. Uh, but in the same time, it's it's it's, it's nice really uh, to like encourage you to find uh, uh, subjects to go for to think about to shoot these uh, subjects. Um, so yeah, um, and what's the other part of the uh, like question? How do you manage the you know photography and your other life? Uh, yeah. <laughs> It, um, when you, uh, I, I work as a as a basic work that not uh, with photography, but this photography, like it's a, another part of my life, like um, uh, like freelance or something like this. So uh, I, I try to to like to manage my time that to go between this and between uh, photography and go more further that to encourage myself and to uh, evaluate myself that to be more more uh, give nice pictures and nice uh, uh, story or um, or photo essay or anything like that to show my photography well and my subject there thank you thank you very much uh, Zion. and yes i could uh, relate when you said it, it gives room, room to tell or to be part of telling the african story over to you, Ayo. Ayo, you, you come from Nigeria, where parents say you can only be a doctor, a lawyer, a nurse, an engineer, or a disgrace to the family. Ayo, how did you get into photography from civil and environmental engineering? OK. Um, actually, for me, when I was in secondary school, I was very good in introductory technology. So I spoke before my teachers, and the part for me to follow was civil engineering. But I like the line, I found photography. So I don't know how to quantify it or say, oh, which was my first love. But um, I'm, for now, I'm sticking with photography in the, for the long road. And for me, it has been a lonely journey in the sense that I'm the only one in my family who sees my vision the way I see it. So for me, if I'm taking any picture, I'm going to the bush to take pictures. Sometimes they might look at me like, what is wrong with me? You understand? But I just want to take pictures of animals because I have passion for it and I find it fascinating to do that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Aya. And in case they ask you again what is wrong with you, please let them know that you won prize from doing this very bizarre and strange thing. 
Uh, we are yet to have uh, Wilfred join us. I don't know what could have been the problem. But that being said, uh, we come back to you. Um, Yusri, you, you, you won the uh, Wikilove's Africa 2020 International first prize. And now you've won the Wikilove's Africa 2022 International Special Collection Prize. How do you feel about your recent win, bearing in mind that you are the second person to win this um, special collection prize category since it was created uh, last year? Yes. Uh, of course, I'm very proud to win in uh, Wikilabs Africa twice. Until now, I hope to win again. Uh, also, I'm proud I'm the second person to win this uh, special collection prize category since it was created last year. Uh, I believe that uh, Wiki Loves Africa, the biggest photography competition in Africa, uh, and it's a big chance for any uh, photographer uh, to show his work and photos. Uh, According to January 22, uh, 2022 uh, statistics, uh, the images uh, in Wiki Africa are viewed uh, 28 million times each month. And uh, for the first seven years, uh, the photos have been viewed by a huge number, 9,000 and uh, 415 million times uh, so it's uh, yeah, a big chance to any photographer to join uh, wikilabs africa uh, i am very proud and ha and happy to be there uh, and i hope uh, to win again inshallah thank you thank you very much uh, usury and yes, it's the biggest opportunity for photographers around Africa to get seen on the global stage. And coming to you once again, Soma, your entry uh, in Nubia won the Wikilabs Africa 2022 International First Prize. It's indeed a breathtaking shot. Soma, tell us the story around this image. What inspired you to take the shots and submit it? Uh, in 2019, I was on a trip with uh, Adasa Club to the city Nuba uh, in Upper Egypt. That day, I uh, was walking alone, uh, looking for some shoots in uh, narrow uh, alleys. And when, uh, night, uh, when night began, on my way back, I noticed that old uh, man sitting in front of uh, his white blue house, uh, surrounded by uh, a group of similar houses, uh, the blue light and the silence of uh, the night. And the old man is, uh, was sitting safely in front of his house. Uh, this... Uh, uh, position I uh, liked very uh, too much, so I decided to uh, take the photo. Interesting. One could think this was taken on um, in a Disney film village. It's a very beautiful shot. Thank you for submitting this and uh, letting the world to see this. And uh, coming to you, Hosian, your submission, Home is My Work back to the Wiki Loves Africa 2022 International Second Prize. It looks like a very personal shot. Because then, how does a graduate of tour guide department become a photographer who takes such an amazing shot? <laughs> That's an interesting uh, question. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, mm -hmm. when I when I just I started, um, I finished my uh, university as a tour guide uh, department um, I didn't like work as a tour guide actually uh, I just working in other kind of I started with IT and I went to to be graphic design and uh, web design and then it ends with to be photographer also um, 
this um, shot um, it's about people that who is living in in mud houses uh, houses b made by mud and bricks so and it's part of my project that i work on and um, i'm trying to um, to to get deep inside their life and how they work and how they live and uh, what what they facing in their life how hard is their life to be even that it's a very simple life but in the same time they are working hard and try to make their living so so yeah it's, uh, that, that that's that's make me like and they are very friendly people actually so that they make me like to be one of the house actually like to be inside living with them so you find that all my all my pictures of them are really like um not not a stage it it's it's really um really a, a real picture that they are working like that they are living like that so i never like talk with them like no stop here like do go there like i just keep shooting what what i see is it's really real real picture real life yeah interesting interesting yes there is this um you know personal and how do i say real life attachment when you look at the picture critically so and it's it's safe to say that uh, the projects that you're working on rewarded you um twice congratulations once again <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it won the prize, so congrats. <laughs> Double yeah, thank you, thank you. But, but there, are, there are many pictures, actually. <laughs> Interesting. And uh, yeah. coming, coming to you, Ayo, uh, for a first time, uh, the image and title, Planning Ahead, won you the Wiki Loves Africa 2022 International Thought Prize. I, how did you arrive uh, at this image and this title? <coughs> what camera and lens uh, took the shot? Was it a BlackBerry? Uh, it, was a, it wasn't a BlackBerry. <laughs> it was an electric camera. It was with, um, Canon EOS 200D. And um, I was using this shot. I was using um, 50 mm prime lens. So I it was during the I think the pandemic, and um, I was trying to document what was going on in my house with my siblings and my family. So I was trying to make a series out of it, but a lot of the pictures didn't come out the way I wanted it. Just this particular one stood out. And it was just natural and everything, the light and the um, subject, everything just came out perfectly. So, and I did not really have enough space because I was taking the picture from the old way. And using a prime lens, you can't zoom in and zoom out. You just have to position yourself. So that's why you can see the door there showing at the right hand side. So for me, the picture was just more than what I can see it was somebody in our own moment figuring out what's next. Even that we're back in um, the pandemic and that we don't know when it's going to end at that time. So she was very um, optimistic about um, <clears throat> life after the pandemic. And it was my sister um, just in that idea for a uh, fashion business she was working on, uh, rebranding and everything. So when the, actually I saw the competition, I think sometime two years ago, I think that time the team was um, on the move, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So when I saw it, at that time it was too late. It, has, um, it was past the deadline, so I could not get, um, I could not uh, participate. But next, the following year I participated and I um, was, uh, it thought one out for the respective um, national prize for health and winners. But um, when I got the um, note, uh, the, the notice that I was the third one out, I was pleased about the list, but I wasn't so happy because I wanted to give it my all. And I was like, okay, next year, I'm going to like, ah, I'm going to shoot it. You understand? So, so when the time came and I saw the, um, the team, 
So I went to my archive and I saw that you know, this thing is a good thing for the team. And it was a pleasure to be honored. Interesting. Just when I thought <laughs> we had finished dealing with the pandemic, somebody has an archive filled with shots taken <laughs> during the pandemic <laughs> to remind us that it's not over. Thank you so much <laughs> for submitting that amazing documentation of your household during the pandemic. And thank you for mentioning the lens and the camera with which you did take the picture. And uh, it seems Wilfred has been able to join us. Hello, Wilfred, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Sesmus. Thank you. Nice. Ah, we, the pleasure is ours. We're worried you wouldn't be able to join us. Can I <laughs> throw your first question your way? OK, sir. OK. Uh, you you won the best uh, video prize for Wiki Loves Africa 2022. I understand it's your first time in you know, the, the contest. How and why did you decide to submit a video instead of photos like most first timers would do? Okay, okay. Why a video instead of a photo like most first timers would do? Um, video making, filmmaking generally is a passion for me. So um, I, I saw that most people were throwing towards the line of photos. So, and I looked into the previous videos from um, previous years of the competition and I noticed that, okay, yes, I think we need to bring in something fresh here, yeah. something interesting, as interesting as the photos that we have um, um, being submitted at the um, contest yearly. So I wanted to challenge video, <laughs> video makers, video um, filmmakers and all to actually get into this and try to improve the platform, try to improve, improve the community. And um, yes, bring more value. More stories as well. So I decided to use video as my main medium for telling um, story. Interesting. Yes, guys, it's only fair that we <clears throat> let you get a sneak peek of what this video looks like. Ayla?
Thank you so much, uh, Wilfred, for submitting that video. This video is actually um, titled My Dream Home, and it is nothing short of intriguing, Wilfred. What inspired the video, and what were you hoping to show the world through it? I also know that um, you need some security clearance to fly a drone in many parts of Nigeria, like here in Abuja and some other places due to the insecurity. How did you manage to get your Oman air vehicle in the air, Wilfred? Hello, Ceslos, please, can you repeat the question again? I was not oh, okay clever. oh sorry about that so i was um of course complimenting the video my dream home for being amazing and we also would like to know what inspired the video and what were you hoping to show the world through the video i also know that in some parts of nigeria you need a level of security clearance to fly a drone uh due to the insecurity how did you manage around these Okay, what inspired me to make the video? I wanted to tell a story that is really about us Africans and not just Africans, but those who are below the poverty line. Um, I happen to be one of those people who came from that, from that place, from that not so gifted, not so, um, well, not so good generally. So I wanted to tell that story of, the story of our struggle through that process of getting to where we want to get to, despite the hurdles we encounter. So it's, I literally took it up from my childhood. I had a lovely relationship with my mom before she passed. So um, we grew up in the slums of um, Bonnie at the time. I grew up rather, I'm sorry, <laughs> in the slums of Bonnie at the time. So um, it was hard, it was tough. So I took all of that, dug in, took all of that emotion and threw it into a story. And luckily, the theme for this year, <laughs> luckily, the theme for this year is um, home and habitat. And I just thought of, okay, what does home really mean to me? So I thought of home, I thought of my mom, I thought of my, my childhood, how I grew up to be, who I am right now, and decided to tell a story about that. That's what home really meant to me. You know, going back home to see my mom, and she encouraging me on a daily basis, me going out there to chase my dreams, despite the obstacles and all. I had to tell that story. Someone had to see it. Someone had to see that we still have hope, that we still want to get to that promised land, so to speak, despite the hurdles here. And as for the um, security clearance for flying drones um, during the project, I had a very, I worked with a very experienced um, drone pilot who knew exactly the areas in the city where we could fly drones and not get to run into some, some trouble with the law. And so I decided to work specifically with those areas. And I, I wanted to take some other areas that were more interesting, but I felt like we could actually use this and achieve what we wanted to achieve. So that's how we were able to <laughs> make our way out of it. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Wilfred. Yes, the, 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 the video really portrayed uh, you know, someone's daily life. And uh, of course, the people in that area might not have it all, but what I've seen is the gift, the talent to have uh, come to somebody like you who live in such area, but look at you today, making the giant uh, strides, winning international prizes. So I would rather give my respect and kudos. And of course, it's okay if you dedicate your prize to everybody who grew up in the area. <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wilfred. And uh, coming to you, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That, that he's like doing like some was drone. Drone is very dangerous here. Like so, it's amazing to shoot with drone. Actually, so it's so so nice. Really, <laughs> depends on what you're shooting. 
<laughs> Thank you for, for mentioning that. Yes, drone footages are amazing, but then due to some regulations like we had mentioned, it, it could be hard to get a permit, but thankfully enough, he had somebody who was an expert and knew where they could fly their drones without requiring um, any form of security clearance. And then coming to you, Usury, Windows Stories is an amazing collection, I must say. I can't help but feel that, I mean, these um, windows are maybe a collection from COVID-19 lockdown chronicles. <laughs> Please help us to understand your thought process when you took the images of these windows. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No problem. Uh, okay. Uh, I try as much as I can to have a story in my photos uh, to attract the viewer and make him relate to the heroes of the picture and uh, imagine their lives, their condition, and imagine the place. Uh, also, I try to send a message to the viewer uh, by my photos. Uh, Windows as a subject in, uh, in the photo helped me a lot uh, in this matter. Uh, this collection uh, is uh, a collection I, I shoot uh, in many trips and many workshops uh, in the street uh, along about uh, 10 years. Uh, I believe that uh, why Windows exactly? Uh, first, as I said before, uh, uh, Windows as a subject in the photo helped me uh, to send my message. Uh, the second, I believe that behind every window, uh, a story. Uh, windows in sometimes uh, or in the same building may be the same, but each window uh, have its own uh, story. Uh, and behind each window is the room that is the world of someone uh, when faces leaping over the window uh, my shot record uh, a moment uh, from that world uh, from uh, this person maybe uh, in any age group uh, this person may be sad, happy, crying, or had any other uh, feelings. Uh, as, a as a photographer, I record a moment from uh, the world and the life of uh, this person. Uh, in the other side, or in the other side, the viewer asking and imagine uh, the world of this person and thinking about uh, uh, his feelings. Uh, this make the message from the photo and the photo review in, in general different from a viewer uh, to another. Uh, I think that the uh, mechanical of success for any photographer is, uh, is to make the viewer take uh, his time, uh, think about the photo, and get his uh, own message. That's all. Thank you very much, Yisri. These uh, window images are really interesting. And it seems you really caught um, most of the people shown there in their very, very relaxed time enjoying the view <laughs> and all <laughs> so yes it's, it's really in interesting thank, thank you. you yeah M most of your series uh, pictures are uh, have message all the time <laughs> <laughs> interesting in fact you egyptians you guys um i mean should maybe take the toe on the next line of questions if we should take the lead and that's because you have all acquired uh, many years of uh, experience when it comes to photography and videography. Starting with you, um, Hosein, what advice would you give anybody looking at venturing into documentary photography? And any advice for future Wikilove's Africa participants? Looks like you Egyptians have hacked this thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we don't have any hacks. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I will I will start first with the um, uh, the wiki participants that uh, to advise them first of all that to um, I would love to to let them that focus about that what you are shooting the subject that you are shoot focus about what the jury want or um, not the jury want um, what 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 the the theme is about you have to think about that and then after that you take your time you take your um, your eyes look around you everywhere that you uh, you are in and shoot and focus also about the quality because um, sometimes pictures are like sometimes it's interesting picture but have no quality so you have to, to think about the quality also this, this is very very important that when you are give your picture in so yeah you have to think about this so so deep so so for a long time not just shoot 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 but nothing you are shooting nothing at all so you have to think you have to think a lot about what you are shooting about your subject um what was the first question? I forget. Sorry. <laughs> for documentary photography, what advice would you give? Uh, for for uh, documentary, um, documentary is so so huge and so so deep. Um, so I, I think I think that you have to f um, focus and think about what to, to in front of you and down in your legs in front of you like beside you there is a story beside you there is something going on beside you you don't have to go so so far to like to go to um like i don't have to go to kenya because i have something here and i have something rich here to to talk about so you have to think also only first about yourself about what around you and then you can go other places and focus about how you will tell your own voice or yeah you want to give the voice of these people that you want to talk about to document document about them so you have to think this about how to give the voice how to to give the reality not to f not fake you have to show reality uh, when you are about the sequence about the editing uh, you don't like uh, documentary doesn't need to to do like photoshop to take uh, something from the here and put it here no the community have to talk about reality what's going on what's life Let's talk about really life so that's my advice about this thank you Hosea. thank you and uh over to you summer i mean do we all have to join a um, photography club what advice can you give uh, you know to people who want to be <clears throat> professionals at yeah. this uh, my advice uh, for photographer uh, in little words uh, first uh, love what you do uh, following your feeling and you must uh, have a vision and uh, my advice for the future uh, participate is to participate in the competition due to its uh, importance uh, it's one of the most important competition in uh, africa a large number of uh, photographers participate uh, in this uh, competition thank you very much soma and over to you usury what would you say if i want to perhaps start a uh, documentary photography tomorrow or if i want to Come and join you to compete for the Wiki Loves Africa prizes. Uh, okay, my advice to any photographer uh, is uh, trying uh, the street photography. Uh, you can shoot many types of photography themes, like portrait, black and white, color, documentary, video, slow shutters. Uh, also, the interaction with people and uh, knowing their life, uh, conditions, uh, dreams, uh, you will get more connections and friends. Uh, you will increase your experience generally in the life. Uh, you will not just take a photo uh, by your eyes, 
but uh, you will shoot by your eyes and feelings. Uh, and I think it's a big difference in, uh, in two cases. In the other side, uh, talking and uh, to be in the photos make most of people uh, happy, uh, especially in the simple uh, village. Uh, and uh, they will be more happiness if you print out and give uh, and give them uh, the photos uh, in your next uh, visit. I think uh, it uh, will be a great uh, job. Thank you very much. Yes, a lot of people, they like to smile and pose for the camera. And uh, coming to you, Ayorinde, what photography tips can you give to people who want to get into photography and what tips can you give to those who want to participate in Wiki Loves Africa in the future? Uh, for me personally, for those that want to go to photography, I think you should focus on shooting what it feels like rather than what it looks like. But when you focus on shooting what it feels like, that's when you realize the power you have as a photographer. And that's when you realize that you don't have to shoot every time. They have to do more planning and shooting less. Because, um, so my photos, when I see them, I become proud of myself and the work I'm doing. And there are some photos of other people you see that it can invoke a lot of emotions. It can invoke um, despair and happiness, sadness, or even nostalgia. And those kind of, we are seeing those kind of things when you go to exhibitions or even galleries. It makes you become proud of being a photographer, knowing that there's a chance that you can replicate those things. And for those that want to participate in the competition in the future, I think the first thing people should take into the guidelines. I think that is one of the reasons why a lot of people don't um, make it true. But when I take a lot of photos, I see a lot of photos that inspire me to the next thing to do a series on it or document something similar. And along the line, I see um, a lot of photos which, with within my own knowledge, I'll say, okay, um, they say I have a lot of work to do. But, uh, some people I discovered that it was a mistake I had made during my early days as a photographer. I when I say for the competition, I just go and upload photos. I don't look at the guidelines. So later I say, ah, okay, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I think they should take their time because I think you can't, you can't watch perfection. Everything takes time. And um, even though you are going any niche of photography that you pick at the end of the day. It requires passion and uh, passion for patience. Because <coughs> me, I want to do um, martial portrait photography. And it has been one of my biggest challenges because I have to buy new equipment and other things. But you know, it's once in a while you see money from other niches like um, photo photography or wildlife. So, any niche anybody decides to focus on at the end of the day, it requires passion and patience and then so just to become better. Thank you very much, Ayo. I saw Wilfred nodding his head when you say people should read the guidelines. And it made me remember after, I mean, they announced his video as the best prize, a uh, best video prize winner. I had to like, whoa, how did you come about this? Because there was a landmark uh, uh, in the video. That's Genesis Cinema in Port Harcourt. It's a popular landmark. And I've been to that place and Wilfred just took it out and presented it in another light. Like I had never admired it that much. So coming to you, Wilfred, <laughs> what um, maybe videography tips can you give to people who want to join? And uh, what can you say to people who want to come for you next year to win the <laughs> Loves Africa Best Video Prize? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see them come, actually. I'd like to see a lot of them come. That's why I came. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay, so um, tips that I can give to people generally who want to make videos that make impact is to actually tell 
a story. We all have stories. Everybody has stories. And we all have similar experiences too at certain stage or point in our lives. So let's pay attention to those stories. They come from personal experiences too. So storytelling is very, very important. If you can't start by just creating something out of the blue, then look around, it's easier. But then tell a compelling story that, um, that should have a meaningful impact to the society one way or another. That's how I, that's my approach, especially for this um, year's contest. Um, the gears, your skill, they matter, yes. But don't forget about the storytelling. The storytelling comes, um, attains a certain level when you apply the knowledge you have in the field to storytelling and telling it in a, in a very um, compelling way. So I don't think anybody should undermine that. Because if I look out there, there are certain people who are better than me in certain other things when it comes to lighting, when it comes to um, um, composition and some other aspects related to cinematography. But I just leveraged on story. I literally told those, that story with just one light. And that's the one I used that night. Like I, I did everything possible to tell, tell the story, no matter the, the challenges I faced. So that's one other point I want to make. No matter the challenges you have in front of you, there's always a way around it. There's always a way. I, I had just four days to make that video before the deadline. <laughs> and um, I made that video within two days, edited within two days and submitted just before I ran out of time. I had one minute left before the video got uploaded completely. So that's it. If it were some other time, I would have given up. Some people would have given up at that point, but I didn't. So that's also something I'm telling all, especially up and coming storytellers out there that want to use video as a medium for telling stories. Pay attention to these things. Pay attention to the fact that you've been facing these challenges over time, not just in your storytelling life generally, and you've struggled to get to that point. You can't give up now. Take that energy, apply it to your cinematography, face all the obstacles, face all the challenges, come out victorious. Um, um, yes, apply all the skill you have to quality in cinematography generally, to storytelling, then you can tell an Im impactful story that would last um, a lifetime, really. So for those who want to come into the <laughs> competition, who are coming into the competition, um, please, please, um, one of the things I've um, noticed it's exactly what, um, sorry, I, I can't remember your name. Ayomi Day, <laughs> is that it? Ayomi Day. Ayomi Day. Ayomi Day. Ayomi Day. R-I-N-D. I'm so sorry. Ayomi <laughs> Day. Okay, so yes, pay attention to the rules. Like When I came in, I looked at the rules and I was like, wow this is going to be a little bit challenging but <laughs> i need to do this to make sure that i come out um as at least one of the um um contestants who was considered for this year's like recognized in some sort of way so i had to pay attention to the rules i knew that i look back in the um back at um the previous competitions i realized that okay why don't we have more challenging videos um, than these ones that won. <laughs> so I thought, um, maybe, maybe some people just didn't follow the rules. That's why they were knocked out, or that's why they weren't selected. So uh, yeah, I totally go with that. Just follow the rules, tell good, compelling stories, take great photo photos, follow the rules, and I'm sure you stand a great chance. Thank you very much. Uh, and don't wait till the deadline. <laughs> Very important. It's very important. Don't wait till the deadline. Don't wait till the deadline. You <laughs> might not. You might not be so lucky like uh, Wilfred. And yes, rules, rules, guidelines, guidelines. Thank you so much, um, Wilfred. Thank you, Ayurinde, uh, Hosein, um, Usri. 
Thank you. And uh, Soma, for these amazing uh, responses you're giving us to the questions. Thank We've talked about rules, guidelines. Here we still have uh, a member of the jury, people who had to make sure that these rules were obeyed and made the right um, selections and right decisions. In the person of Miriam, was uh, hello Mimi, are you here? I think you're okay. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can hear you. Finally, it's great to see your face. We're sorry that yeah, um, I mean, we couldn't you. engage you, but we would have loved to. So, in a line or two, could you please um, introduce yourself, Miriam? Yeah, so as you all know, and um, by the way, is everyone listening? So, can I address? Yes, the okay. So I just wanted to firstly say congratulations to all the winners. And you guys are so talented. You inspired me. Um, I'm so happy to be part of this, um, you know, this project, this contest. It was really very um, inspiring for me. I learned in the process, you know, of uh, looking at all the beautiful pictures that were submitted. Um, so my name, Miriam Musa, you already know, I am a creative director that's what i do at the moment that's what i'm focusing on but prior to that i am a self-taught photographer um videographer and and graphic designer so i uh, picked up this interest when i was growing up you know i just decided to pursue uh, photography because i love taking pictures um and then gradually it grew to um doing it for my friends and family, and then eventually a business. So I have uh, my business, WebIsa Studio, which is a content marketing agency. So what we do, we create content for businesses, um, yeah, like photos, vi um, videos, graphic design, whatever they need to like, you know, showcase their services is what I, I that's where you find me, you know, as a creative director, helping my clients do all that. So that's just a brief summary of Myself. Thank you very much, Miriam. For a creative director at Webiza Studio, from there to uh, Wiki Loves Africa 2021 and 2022 International Jury consecutively, what drives you to always want to be part of the Wiki Loves Africa International Jury? Is there a love story here? <laughs> um, so the first um, experience was, you know, uh, very new to me as a as a judge, um, but I enjoyed it nonetheless because I, as as a photographer myself, like I've mentioned, it's very inspiring to see other photographers work and to see the different um, approach that they they bring into the theme of the of the year. Um, so just seeing how the photographers um, express themselves, you know, trying to meet up, trying to meet the theme for the year that has been set. So it, it inspires me a lot. I love seeing the creativity. I think it's the great creativity that is the driving force for me because as a creative, it's always good to surround yourself with other creatives, to see other people's work and be inspired by it. And it's just so awesome again that all these awesome photos are coming from Africa. So it allows me to then see places that I've never dreamt of seeing, you know, um, and knowing that all these places exist, it's awesome. It's, it's beautiful for me to be part of it. Interesting, Miriam. It's good um, we are giving you a joyride on a virtual exhibition around Africa. Yes, You're welcome. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The, <laughs> the Wikilabs Africa 2022 contest received over 16,000 entries under the home and habitat theme. What can you say about the entries, Miriam, and how they portrayed home and habitat across the African continent? Did any entry make any special impression on you? Yes. Oh, they made a lot of them did. A lot of them did. And but of course, like you mentioned, there are a lot of pictures to go through. So it's not easy to I right now remember every single one. But I I I can remember, but I don't think the one I really that stuck out to me 
I believe um, didn't win the competition, but it's a photo of um, a woman, um, an African woman standing in front of her hot um, house. So it, she's placed, placed in the middle of the frame, and then her house is behind her, and she stands there as in bold. I can't remember who submitted that entry. I don't know if you can remember. Yes, um, I remember. It's on the top 20, yes. It's top 20, of course. So that one really stood out to me because it just shows, um, it reflects the, the theme for this year, which is, um, um, you know, referring to being at home. So I just felt like her standing in front of her house just shows like it's a power pose to me. It shows that she's comfortable, she feels safe at home, she's, you know, and and the house is beautiful. So that, that stood out to me. But the other entries were very interesting as well. I also noticed how some of the compos composition had to do with um, having like a mocks. There are some photos that had like mocks showing the... Um, like the home, but also shows how important it is, how religion is also important to a lot of people. Actually, through some, you know, religion is, is like a home for everyone. You know, it's a home for us, it's a spiritual home, sort of, you know, your religion. So if that's also represented in the photo, plus the person being at home, actually just makes it a stronger uh, image for me. So that's, those are the kind of, uh, those are a few of the photos that stood out to me. But sorry, I can't remember exactly the names of the people who submitted and, and all that. Yeah, but at least you did well describing um, the, your favorites. And I think I, I clearly remember that shot, making it into the top 20. Yes. And uh, last, lastly, Mira, you, you worked um, on the jury that selected these winners. Uh, please um, describe your experience on the Wiki Loves Africa 2022 International Jury. Was it difficult, time consuming? Any meeting over coffee to decide what images went through what stage? What can one expect after agreeing to be a member of the jury? Um, it was quite seamless for me um, because everything is online, is based, as in, is online based. So, um, it just had to, we just had to like go through the pictures. Um, it was easy to scroll through the pictures. It was easy to rate the pictures because of the platform, the Wiki um, Love Africa platform. It made it really, really easy. So I don't think I would say um, there was any difficulty on my part because I was able to do it at, as in do the uh, rating at the times that were that's convenient for me, although you know there are deadlines that you have to meet as a juror, but um, it was enough time that was given to actually do the rating and then meet the deadlines. Um, so I do not have any complaints at all. Um, so I just take my time, go through the photos, you know, and then rate them, you know, as I deem fit. So. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was smooth for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Miriam. The jury task wouldn't have been done without your input, and we appreciate that. Thank you also for answering the questions asked, and uh, hopefully perhaps someone might have a question or two for you during the Q&A section of the episode. Okay. That being thank you said, so much. Thank you. Thank you once again. And thank you to the Wikilabs Africa 2022 intentional winners. And uh, over to you from the audience in case you have any questions for any of the special guests. Yes, uh, Florence, the montage uh, platform is a platform. Miriam was uh, referring to when she said the Wikilove's Africa platform. Yes, that's the platform Wikilove's Africa uses to judge the photos. It's seamless. And we also like to let you guys know that you will be getting 
a session presentation on that tool and many other amazing tools that we use in the Wikimedia space and of course to know how they work. So be looking forward to that at the Wikindaba conference. Okay, in the absence, uh, okay, my dad is saying um, the video really brings the competition themes together. Thank you for the comments, Mary Dad and uh, Florence. In fact, I think it's, it's, it's quite uh, <laughs> soothing to have these comments instead of questions from the audience. <laughs> yes, yes, they are very interesting comments. That being said, I think um, it's time we move over to the news segment to give you the news updates. And uh, with me today to share the news updates is uh, Noni Mklakha. I think who always um, interchanges with Noni to do it. She is missing today because she is attending the Wiki Arabia in Dubai. Hello, Noni. Hi, Sislaus. Hello. Yeah, thank you for agreeing to do this with me. Sure. So the um, first item on the news is to let you know that the participants of the Wiki Loves Africa 2022 International Photo Contest are invited to take part in the Wiki Loves Africa 2022 General Survey to help improve the context in 2023. Please participate in the survey. The 2022 Wiki Loves Women She Said campaign is on Wiki Code is open. Go to Wikilove's Women Meta page to learn more and participate. The deadline's on the 31st of December, 2022. The Wikimedia Foundation Inuka team is exploring having the Wiki Stories tool on Commons, so they want to get your feedback. Join the office hours um, on 29th and 31st October to give your feedback. The Ombuds Commission and the Case Review Committee are looking for members. People are encouraged to nominate themselves or encourage others that they feel would contribute to these groups to do so. Please write in English to the Trust and Safety Team at ca at wikimedia.org to apply to the OC or to the legal team at legal at wikimedia.org to apply to the CRC. Wikiworld Heritage User Group is running a new video contest related to UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage. Please visit the WH Intangible 2022 page on Wikimedia Commons to learn more and participate. Deadline is 30th November 2022. Wiki Rescues Manuscripts, a call to action and project to support the digitization of manuscripts on Wikimedia platforms such as Wikimedia Commons and Wikisource, is having the next Wikisource Triag meeting on the 26th of October, 2022 at 2 p.m. UTC. Try to be there. Wikimedia Deutschland Wikimove podcast has released a new episode on peer support in our Wikimedia movement. Check their website and feel free to react to the new episode on their meta page to continue the conversation. Volunteer, supports, volunteer Supporters Network would like to invite you to a Skillshare meeting around one of the topics of retention. The event will happen on October 27th at 2 p.m. UTC on Zoom. The link to the meeting will be sent to the registered participants on the day of the Skillshare. Thank you very much, um, Nani. That. And uh, the Wiki Love Sports 2022 by Wikidoni is currently ongoing. You're welcome to participate. Deadline is 20th December 2022. The African Knowledge Initiative and Wiki Vibrance are hosting the Africa Youth Day 20, 2022 campaign launch webinar on the 29th of October. The time is 11 a.m. UTC. You can find the link to register in the newsroom section on the Wiki Africa page, meta page, sorry. The Wikimedia Sound Logo Contest submission deadline is now closed. You can view the batches of entries 
under the submissions section of the wiki sound logo meta page and catch up on the details of the sound logo on our last wiki africa hour episode episode 16. wiki in daba 2022 conference is happening from the 4th to the 6th of november in kigali Wiki in Africa is one of the media partners for the conference and will be streaming very interesting sessions of the conference live on Wiki in Africa, YouTube, and among others, for your viewing pleasure. Lastly, our uh, Wiki in Africa team member, Florence Ovoa, attended the Wikimedia Summit 2022 in Germany. Documentation about the summit has been published and can be viewed on Wikimedia Summit 2022 meta page. And uh, for action buttons and links on all the news items, please go to the Wiki Africa Hour newsroom section on the Wiki Africa Hour meta page. Thank you, Noni. Thank you, Seslaus. In a world where the accepted global perception of Africa is largely influenced by non-Africans, it is only fair that Africans get in front of changing and correcting the narrative about who we really are, both as a continent and as a people. Since 2014, Wiki Loves Africa has been playing the role of providing Africans the opportunity to tell their own side of the story, leveraging Wikimedia Commons and even get to win prizes while at it. This initiative keeps featuring African creatives and photo enthusiasts participating under the various Wiki Loves Africa themes so far, helping illustrate Wikipedia articles better, telling the African story one shot at a time. We've heard from these amazing um, sharp pest shooters from across Africa and how they have made it to this point. And I believe their responses have inspired a lot of us to join the movement of telling the African story. On behalf of the Wiki in Africa team, I say a big thank you to you, Sama Kamal, Mohamed Hossein, Ayarinde Ugundele, Green Wilfred Somoni, and Mohamed Yuzri, and Miriam Mosa for finding time in your respective busy schedules to honor our invitation. I also thank everyone for showing up. I remain your host, Seslos Obunaya, and I wish you a happy weekend. See you next time.